<laughs> what an entrance. Well, welcome to Mar Mike's Garage. And today we're gonna do something a little different. Today we're going to do a video that does not require you to buy a single thing. Now, when you think about a lawnmower, very simple motor. What does it need to run? It needs fuel, air, and fire. And what is always the trickiest for us rednecks? It's figuring out the fire part, the spark, the electronics. So what we're gonna do today, I'm gonna walk through issues you could have getting your fire, which is your spark plug. So we're gonna start with how to test if you have a good spark or not. And then we're just gonna go through a few free fixes on a, what I've learned over the years to get you a new spark without actually having to buy anything. We'll just clean up a few things. So it's gonna be a fun one, real quick one. What we're gonna be testing on is pretty cool. I got this uh, Easy Track Z225, little 40 inch uh, John Deere zero turn. Real sweet mower. It's got a 19.5 single, uh, single piston Briggs on it. We've been having a weak spark on her. Uh, so we're gonna go through and see if we can get her to spark up again. So stay with me and uh, let's get sparky. All right, so the first step in a spark is to test the spark. Now, typically the spark plug is inside the motor uh, and you can't see it, but there are ways to test the spark plug on the outside of the motor. So what we want is a good blue spark, real strong, between the electrodes here. And to test it, what you need to do, you need to ground it out against somewhere. So there, you can ground it out against this manifold like this, just anywhere metal that's going to ground it out, and then we can crank the motor. Now, just as a warning, this is not exactly safe. If you have any fuel fumes around or gas splashing, you could blow yourself up. Uh, but this is the way I've, I've always done it. I've never had any issues. There are better Amazon spark plug testers, uh, which I will post a video above to go through and try those suckers out. But uh, so let's see how this works. So I've got my spark plug here. You want to do this where it's dark. You can always see it better. And then we're just going to ground her out, let's say, right there. I have no idea how this is going to look on camera, but we'll give her a shot, and then uh, let's crank her. Well, as you can see, you know, I've got a spark, but it's red, and typically with a red spark means it's a little bit weak. So your first step, and the easiest step, is to, of course, clean the spark plug or put a new one on there. So I'm going to pull the spark plug over to the bench and show you guys how I clean it out, and we will turn the lights back on. Stick with me. All right, so I'm gonna show you my preferred method of cleaning a spark plug. What it involves is just a wire brush, and then for an extra, I like to get a little uh, car cleaner on there, shoot a little car cleaner, and then we're gonna brush her off, real simple. Now I know there's some stuff online with uh, torches and explosions and weird stuff, but this, this always works pretty good. As you can see, it comes off real easy. Now your spark plugs are gonna be, <laughs> they're gonna have different levels of schmuck on there. But the important thing is, you know, sometimes you clean them and it looks clean, but you've really get, got to get that electrode in there. So always do more than what you think. A lot of times I'll go in there like so, but this one, this one cleaned off pretty good. She was just running rich. It's actually a fairly new spark plug, but uh, yeah. Oh boy, that spark plug is looking cleaner than a whistle. Look at that. Just a little scrubby scrubby. Let's see if she zooms in. Oh yeah, look at that. She's pretty. All right. So... Now what you can do, you can go back in and test it and see if that's working. All right, gang, so let's say in theory, you went ahead and followed my instructions to a T and you got a new spark plug or you cleaned her up and she's looking good. When you try her again against a piece of metal, an old spark is not sparking. So let's follow up the spark plug wire to the next culprit, which would be the ignition coil. In order to get your ignition coil, <laughs> I can't say it right, ignition coil, you would want to take off this plastic cover. It's real simple. On these, there's a couple screws right there, a couple in the back, uh, maybe one right here. Take your air filter off, and voila! Get a look underneath her skirt there, and look at that. That is your ignition coil. So it's all one piece, the spark plug and ignition coil. Now, on your car motor, they have an electronic ignition, which means the ignition is controlled by the battery. The battery feeds juice to this, and then your ignition coal makes the bigger spark, and then it goes boom. On these smaller motors, they do not have electronic ignition. They have what's called a magneto ignition, which relies on a generator. So the way it works is your flywheel here, big piece of metal, and on it, as it turns, 
there's two magnets. Oh, let me get a little. Two magnets right there. And as these magnets come across your ignition coil, the two things right here, it creates, because this is a magnet, this is a magnet too. And what it does, it creates a little spark that feeds into your CDI, which then becomes a big spark into your ignition coil right here, bigger coils. And then it goes boom through here. It's a real simple, simple system, but it does rely on connection between these uh, magnets here and your magnets here. Now, as you can see here, <laughs> this bad boy has been sitting out in a cow pasture for the last five, six years, and she is just covered with rust. And that rust can be the culprit of your issue. So that's one of the things we're gonna do next. I'm going to remove this. It's real simple. It's just two eight millimeter bolts. We're gonna pull it off and then we're gonna clean that up. And also I'm gonna clean up this flywheel a little bit and see if we can get a better, um, better spark. All right, now before you pull this sucker off, one thing to note is that you're gonna see a wire hooked up to your ignition coil there on the left. That is not a power wire. That is actually a kill wire. So that can also be a good test if your ignition kill system is not working correctly. Maybe it's giving it power all the time when it's not supposed to be. So one test, you could pull this sucker off and then see if it starts working. Because sometimes you could pull that off if your ignition kill thingy is not working correctly and then it starts working, then you know your ignition coil is good. So that's just another test. And that whole kill system, that's a uh, video for another day, but uh, I've been through those too. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this sucker off and pull it over to the bench and we're gonna clean her up. Stick with me. <laughs> All right, so we got this rusty old thing here in the vise and I'm gonna give her a whirl, a little scrub -a Now there's a lot of different ways you could try to tackle this to remove rust. You just get a wire brush. I mean, that would work. You could use a big old wire thing on your angle grinder, let's say, or a different wire thing on your drill. Personally, I'm gonna go with a little air power. I got this little air tool drill thing, Yuma bobber, with one of these discs on the bottom. This is not a sanding disc, it's an abrasive disc. So it'll be a little easier on her than a sanding disc. And then uh, just let her rip. Just make sure you wear some eye protection. And you might put, you know, you might put a mask on, you know. I think this would be a little worse than COVID getting in your lungs. <laughs> See that? Like that. Yeah, see, you can see how quick, but look how deep that rust is. So I'm going to go through this whole thing uh, with my little grinder tool here and get a good, clean surface. And when you do these, make sure to do these, but also get right there because that's your contact patch. I can see. <laughs> yep. See, and that way you're gonna have a clean connection. I can see how much cleaner that is than that one. So, <laughs> fun little, fun little job, and it's uh, free. So let's uh, get her cleaned up and strapped back on. All right, so I got my ignition coil cleaned up the best that I'm going to get her. You can see she's still severely pitted, but I got her, got her pretty spiffy clean, at least better than what she was before. But before we go bolt that thing on there, also, we want to make sure to clean these guys where it actually bolts down because this ignition coil does, um, it does ground to the block right here. So you want to make sure to clean that. And also, I don't know if it matters, but I'm going to go ahead and clean up right here, at least where the the magnets are you'll see these two little indentions right here that's where the magnets are so we want to make sure to get a good clean uh, area there so i'm gonna go ahead and keep on ripping just a touch more somebody using the air tool just uh, just makes me makes me uh shrivel all over not shrivel but uh, i don't know that word oh yeah look how good that works now we're super shiny clean now i'm gonna go ahead and hit the other one here this time I'll remember my air protection because that's freaking loud, baby. I hope at home you're wearing air protection. Hey, the old uh, Amazon Alexa is not blowing your drums out. And then let's see if we can go ahead and... This could be a little harder here. Yeah. I'm probably just going to take a uh, wire brush to this because to be honest, I'm pretty scared because your carburetor's right there and you really don't want to be shooting sparks into your carburetor. And 
So just to brush off the big stuff there, and uh, then we're gonna go ahead and bolt her back on and see how much spark she's making. All right, so now we're gonna reinstall it. I actually got a whole lot of rust off just using this uh, this brush here. So I highly suggest just giving that good old scrubber and then I hit it with some car cleaner, cleaned her off. All right, so let's strap this thing back on here. Now, it just bolts right back on here like so. Your kill wire is gonna be off to the bottom, to the left, like it was before. Now, let's go ahead and get the bolts started. And since this is grounded through these bolts, I like to go ahead and just put a little dialectic grease on there. Yep, that is fancy. I keep this big thing from summit around. Uh, it never runs out. And then you can just shove your bolts in the hole like so, get a little lube on them, a little grease, and uh, <laughs> they're good to go. All right, so then we're gonna go ahead and get them started. And all you're doing here is getting them started. And when you do this, just make sure it's not where the magnet is. So the magnet on that flywheel, it, uh, it'll suck that thing in close. And we'll, we're gonna talk about that issue here in a minute. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get them started, just a touch. And you'll notice I did find a couple of new bolts because my old ones were so rusty. I was actually scared they weren't gonna work. And, uh, but I got them out. But if you have bolts that are that bad off, just go ahead and toss them because you don't want to break off a bolt in this sucker. So, all right, so we got it started. Now, the next thing we want to do, you want to put a gap between this and that flywheel because it, it can't run on there or else it <laughs> make all sorts of heat and problems and this and that. Uh, so what I like to do, I like to use my trusty smoking windmill card. I'm sure there's a more official way to do it, but this is the way I've always done it. You get that gap and then you go ahead and turn it. Oh, not like that. So hang on to it before you turn it. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna bring it around to that magnet. You're gonna see the magnet coming. You're sure gonna feel it. There she is. See, when it hits that magnet, it's gonna suck that thing in. And so it just gives you a natural, natural gap right there. And while it's sucked in, go ahead and you're gonna tighten up your bolts. So go ahead and tighten up your two little eight millimeter bolts with your new grease on there. You can thank me later for my fancy, fancy dancy tricks here. <laughs> At least I impressed myself, right? All right, and I'm hoping with this sucker cleaned up like that, that's all she needs. Because, you know, most of the time, especially when people let these things sit out in the rain, I know they're okay in the rain, but a lot of things like this can just happen. Because rust is, is just no good for anything, especially electronics on a lawnmower. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those fairly tight, but you really don't wanna over tighten these. Because if you break those suckers off in there, then you're in big trouble. And then you go ahead and spit it, look at that. Spits it out, and you still got smoking windmill. Had it today. Dennis and the boys, I wouldn't say they hooked me up, but the barbecue was good. <laughs> they could hook me up next time if they were nice. Uh, let's see. And then, what you're gonna do, I also like to put a little dialectic grease, just because I like saying dialectic grease on our connection here. Just a little touch is all she needs. On your kill wire, hook that sucker back up. Come on. And when I was cleaning it up, I did scrub the kill wire just a touch to make sure we had a good connection on her. Urgh, come on, don't fight me on camera. Cause then I don't look cool. Not like I look cool anyways. All right, there we go. All right, so you got that sucker hooked up. Um, okay, let's go ahead and test her. Let's see if this does it any better than she did before. And when you do this, make sure when you pop this thing in here, your spark plug that is, make sure you feel it pop because you're gonna hear it. When you just put it in there like that, that's not, that's not good. You wanna feel it go pop, just like that. And if it doesn't, go ahead and try to bend this a little bit with a pair of pliers and make that a little tighter. And also another trick, I like to put a little, little grease there just on the tip, just a little bit. So you don't wanna over lube your uh, spark plug. <laughs> okay. So I have done everything possibly I can do in order to get us a better spark. So let me go ahead and zoom us back. I and mean, I'm just crank the lights off, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, see if she does any better than our last round. Even if it doesn't, I'm gonna say it did. So just be ready for a big, 
Big fat spark. <laughs> it's TV, right? All right. All right. You got a good view? She looks good. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that sucker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that looks like a beautiful spark. So, anyways, I hope this helped. I'm going to go ahead and do another video. I'm actually going to do two more videos. One on trying some different uh, spark testers. And then also I'm going to do one on swapping out that ignition coil. And one on burning the oil. All on this lawnmower. So, just a few tricks I've used in the past. Uh, hopefully this helps. If it does, let me know. If it doesn't, let me know. So, with that, stick around and Mower Mike's out. Catch you next round.